Um, uh, one of the founders of the fashion label Fresh Ego Kid, a, a player at many clubs up and down the country, including Aldershot, um, Shrewsbury Town, uh, Wildstone as well. Um, so many clubs um, and so many people, actually, that Marvin Morgan um, touched. I think he was one of those people when you met. He had such an I infectious personality. He was so ready to help other people, give them advice. He was such a passionate person as well he had vision i mean he honestly if you met him you would get it even if it was for five minutes five hours whatever it might be and the thing that has stood out to me so much this week seeing tributes from so many people is i mean i was almost taken aback the amount of time that he had given to others despite his footballing career and his business he was able to support so many people in so many different areas oh absolutely and i think you, you get a sense of that from some of those fantastic tributes that we've just heard why it was important to me someone I knew really through a lot of other people of course I crossed paths with him and, and we spoke and, and we talked on, on different occasions was he started doing something at a time where it wasn't really looked upon as, as being acceptable you know he was playing in the lower leagues and in non-league I think he realized that at a point listen what I'm earning is not going to be enough to set me up for life for sure what I have got is a bit of time on my hands I'm getting home at three o'clock in the afternoon why don't I look at what else I can do to try and help myself and certainly later on others around me he got told by managers he got told by other footballers and he's been very open about that himself why are you wasting your time with it you need to concentrate on your game and that's really important for me because as a footballer you're often only seen as Joby McEnough who's a midfielder or a right winger you're judged on what you do on a Saturday or a Tuesday and there is more to us than who we are on a football pitch and Marv wasn't afraid to come out and say yes I am a footballer but I can go and do something else and I will be something else and where he's taken his brand you know from literally going buying hats wholesale going round to football clubs using those contacts tapping into people and that's where the personality comes into it getting that across, getting people to believe in in his brand and that belief that he had himself when people were telling him not to bother. You know, maybe people question his commitment to football. And for me, when you talk about a visionary, you talk about, we hear influencers so much and a lot of influence I see, they're not influenced anything or what they are doing is they're telling you about somebody else's mm. brands. Go and wear this he was doing it about his own product that he believed in and that was so powerful and that's why certainly you look where he came from with the brand to where he got to he's in some of the biggest biggest outlets you can think of in this country up and down the high street jd sports Foot Locker. he's done collaborations with puma at massive global companies mm, xbox as well yeah. xbox and what he's done he's used yes the vehicle of, of fresh ego kid he hasn't just said, I've done well for myself. I'm happy to sit here and reap those benefits, reap those awards. Yes, Yang's wearing my hat. Lukaku's wearing my hat. He wants to go and help others. And that is the biggest thing that comes across when you speak to people. Sean Cummins, who I know well, for, fell out of football and it's a tough place to be, man. When you leave, we spoke about earlier, I've been very fortunate to be able to get into someone like Marv. He made me go, well, I'm still playing, but why am I not thinking about what's next? That might be education, you know, go and do a course. That might be a business elsewhere to set myself up for when I finish playing because it is such a tough thing to do when you finish playing. There's so many aspects that you miss of the game. And I think for a lot of lads, they really do struggle. Marv know that because he went through that himself. And all he wanted to do was help others, you know, despite his own health issues, despite running a business, all he was about was, right, what can I do to help? He reached out to so many people, gave encouragement to so many people. And for me, that is probably the biggest tribute I can get to him. No matter the success, he would talk to people, whoever they were, whatever walk of life. And we talk about legacy a lot. We talk about our time here. We, we have no control over it, you know, and it's devastating for absolutely everybody. But what he's created, what he's left behind is for those to pick up and, and carry on. And that's been another real strong message that's come from people I've spoken to is the foundation was was laid. All that hard work is not going to go to to waste. So for me, an absolute inspiration, you know, and we hear the word 
in a community amongst the black community maybe that it was way beyond that mm -hmm. you know it wasn't just consigned to football to the black community he influenced so many people and I'm talking globally around the world mm -hmm. um, and it, listen for me you know clearly to his family his friends people around him you know we, we send our sincerest condolences and you know he's going to be a, a huge huge loss but the other big thing to come out of it anyone who knows him any of the videos you see of him that character that laugh that that banter that is something again that will stay with people and of, of course we're grieving and we will continue to grieve but that's something that will always be with us and, and something we should always always remember him by he was an incredible character he was an incredible character darren um and it, anyone that worked with him knew that he it was it was honestly well, you worked with him. i worked with him and honestly from the moment you met him it was like he had he was a vision when i say visionary someone who had a vision a real plan you know everything that he did w was never going to stop with that thing you know it, it, when he was doing fresh ego kid he wanted to bring in anti-discrimination he wanted to bring in mental health and he wanted people in football and outside of football he wanted to use the the i think the success of his brand but also just the love of football to remind people that there is a bigger conversation that we should be having. He had no reason to do that. So many of the things that he did, you want, I can't, I, I honestly was nowhere near the man that he was. I can't understand why he would help so many people, why he would put so much energy into others, so much time. Honestly, you, you, when I say an infectious personality, that almost makes you, it makes you feel like you just want to be his mate. It was so much more than that. You wanted to be like him, honestly. When I listen to, the tributes in that package what screams out to me and what i've seen anyway firsthand is that he was a guy who took responsibility he assumed responsibility for lots of people he would put an arm around people's shoulders he would give people advice that as we've been hearing sometimes they didn't want to take but he knew what he was talking about he knew where he was coming from and he came from a place of love and one of the words I've heard and seen so many times in this past week is inspiration. And he was an inspiration. He was a leader. He was a leader in a time when football needed somebody to galvanise certainly some individuals who might have been disillusioned. You talk about the possibility of falling out of the game and what you do and lacking direction. He was a guy who gave so many people direction. And you could see the love that he was able to inspire from so many people, from the Premier League, Lukaku, I saw tr tributes from some of the very best players in the Premier League, right down to non-league. This is a guy who touched thousands and inspired of thousands, thousands, thousands of, of lives. And I think that in many respects, it, his, we should be celebrating his life. Mm. As you were saying a second ago, Joby, yes, it is a very sad time. And obviously our hearts are with his family at this time. But also we should celebrate the life of somebody who had an impact and it continues to have an impact in the lives of so many people inside and outside the sport. Um, tributes were paid to Marvin Morgan this week from so many different people. I mean, it's incredible. Sport, music, um, people who are in, in media, people who had just respected him from afar. You know, he was one of those people. I saw people saying, I never actually got the chance to meet Marvin Morgan, but he had always been a supporter of mine. He'd sent me messages online saying that, he supported my work to keep doing, and we're talking about young people, 18, 19, 20 years old. It is honestly remarkable, and I'm so, so sad about what what has happened. I mean, it is a real, real, real loss. Um, I just want to finish. I think the, the PFA in particular, who Marvin did a lot of work with, who we collaborated with the PFA and Fresh Ego Kid with, um, sent their... Um, condolences to him we everyone here at TalkSport sends our condolences to the friends the family the former teammates and colleagues of Marvin Morgan and in particular his son his young son Miles um, that's our tribute to Marvin Morgan who um, unfortunately passed away at the age of just 38 may he rest in peace